Welcome back to Good Carpet Paddling. Today we're waxing and washing a boat for some basic maintenance. Boats like this that are heavily used, I would suggest waxing them every three to six months. Uh, it's really up to personal preference on how much you want to wax and how much care you want to put into these boats. For experienced athletes who aren't getting bangs in the boat and smacking their paddle against the side, you might only want to do this right before a big race or nationals. For boats like this though, uh, these are our development boats. We use these pretty aggressively and so we'll see a lot of paint, a lot of spots where the boat has hit the dock and so it's time for us to do a little bit of love to get this boat back into prime shape. For this boat, we see a lot of these black marks from the racks that we hold this boat on. We are also seeing, it's hard to see on a white boat, but we get these like pale white scuff marks that are just elevated from the surface. You'll probably get these uh, with time in any boat. If you'll look at uh, the, the side of the boat where you paddle on, we'll see those white little scuff marks. Most of those can be buffed out and polished out with a little time and patience. So we're gonna get to work on this boat and it'll hopefully look like brand new when we're done. At Gig Harbor we paddle in salt water. So this provides a set of unique challenges that a lot of people in freshwater don't have to deal with. Particularly salt corrosion and what it does to our hardware. So we have metal plates inside of these little channels here and oftentimes our biggest issue with these development boats is that these screws instead of sliding back and forth, as you can see, don't really slide very well. So we're gonna move it up, we're gonna scrub it down, and we're gonna get it in better working order. I am in no ways an expert on which products to use and I'm still figuring it out, but here's what I use. So if we have settings here that are really, really stuck, they're not moving at all, Oftentimes what I'll do is I'll soak it with a penetrating oil first. This is a lot better than WD-40. I spray this pretty heavy handed on any screw that's really stuck and oftentimes just letting it sit, it'll come undone. It really seeps into the screw where it connects into the top and I've found that the screws that I've used this on are less likely to get corroded in the future. If I want to do a little preventative maintenance or if I'm feeling like it's really salted but I can still move it like this, we have this salt away bucket. Uh, this is something that I make sure is biodegradable and is okay for the grass and for any fishies because we're doing it by the water. We don't want to be killing every grass or, or worm I see. Uh, this is only three caps per five gallon bucket. So we're filling this cap three times in a five gallon bucket. A little goes a long way. And we'll just wash down the inside of the boat, the footboard. Uh, for kayaks, I'll pull all of the seats and the footboards out, wipe them down, get in the channels. I'll use this little brush here too to scrape the corrosion along the little tracks. Um, a wire brush is great too on non-fiberglass items. At Gig Harbor we have a lot of boats. This is only half the fleet, but they get in disrepair often. So for our team, our rule is that the coaching staff and the maintenance staff will take care of team-owned boats and personal boats if they are in such disrepair they cannot be paddled. But the personal owners of each of these boats are required to do this kind of upkeep on their own. The first thing we're gonna do with this boat is give it a quick wash to get any remaining debris or salt off the boat. The something that I'm making sure I'm doing is I'm spraying this little channel where the hardware goes. Earlier when I was soaping it, I was making sure to get as much soap in there as I can. And then I'm gonna point the hose right down here and try and spray it out. Because a lot of debris get, likes to get stuck in there, seaweed, dirt, salt. And so I wanna do my best to just get as much flow through there as possible because uh, getting in there with just a little scraper is kind of challenging. Every day the athletes are supposed to wash out their boats and get all of the grime out of there. Unfortunately, they're not as good about washing the insides of their boat. So taking out their hardware, washing in the tracks that their settings sit into. Um, this kind of stuff needs to happen at least weekly if you're paddling in salt water of the removal of hardware scraping down your screws, washing the tracks of your footboard and your seat and your knee block if you have one, uh, and making sure that we're ready to 
continue for the next week of practice. Now I'm gonna give this a really rough dry. It doesn't need to be totally dry. And then after that, I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of acetone on the, pla on the places where this boat has hit other boats and their paint has rubbed off. This just takes off that top layer. So you do have to be careful on new boats. You don't wanna just go through because it can take some of the gel coat off. But in these older boats, this gel coat is toasted and this can just take that outermost uh, color of paint uh, away. Scrub out any of that salt that's been corroding in there. Ugh. I can reach in. It would be nicer if I had one a little bit more narrow, but this works just fine for now. So I have two products I'm gonna be using to restore this boat. I have the Starbright Premium Liquid Rubbing Compound. This is going to have a, a more sandy texture than something like this uh, insulator wax. This is, I don't know if you can tell, this is like the dried bits. It's gonna be a little bit more dry and it's gonna have a tiny bit of grit to it. All good rubbing compounds slash polishers are going to have a very low grit of almost sandpaper. Think of if we have those little scratches that are just beneath the gel coat, we want something to smooth it out and fill in those areas before we use an wax. So this is an insul insulator wax by Colonite. I'm sure I'm saying that wrong. I don't care to look it up though. Uh, this is an insulator wax. It's gonna kind of melt into the boat. My goal with this is to apply enough coats that this used boat the, the scratches, the, the little dents will be filled in with this insulator wax and really melt into the boat. I'm gonna remove this old pad and we just have a Ryobi orbital buffer. I'm gonna move this old one because it's a white boat. I don't want this red to come off and I'm gonna put on this one. So we get just a sleeve of two, it's a Ryobi buffing pads. They almost always come in a sleeve of two. There's a buffing and then a polishing pad. This is gonna be the buffing pad. This is a little more coarse. You can see the microfiber has these little ridges. We're gonna use this with the liquid rubbing compound and we're gonna let this dry, sit, and then we're gonna buff it out in small sections of the boat. Then we're gonna swap out this pad for this real fluffy pad and we're gonna use this with the insulator wax. So what we're gonna do with this rubbing compound is we're gonna put a little bit on a microfiber rug Ignore how dirty it is, preferably use a clean one. And we're gonna apply it to a dry surface in small circular rounds in short patches. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just get a thin layer on, a little goes a long way. And we're just gonna try and get a film now. We have a white boat, so it's gonna be harder to tell the film. But you'll know when you're done when there's gonna be a kind of dry, powdery, feel to the end. So we can see it's still a little bit wet. It'll almost feel like liquid chalk of any power lifters or, or gymnasts who use liquid chalk. It should feel and dry into like a, a, a dried powder. We just finished with the rubbing compound. So now we're gonna go in with the same soap and water that we used at the beginning. We've filled in all of the little holes that we can we tried buffing it out as best we can. Not all these little black marks from the rubber are gonna be removed, but that's okay. Now it's time to move on to get some shine on the boat. The boat's now waxed with the insulator wax. We'll let it sit and melt, and it is good to rock and roll. Thanks for joining us today. This is something that needs to happen every three to six months to keep the boat in working shape. Maybe more if you're newer, maybe less if you're not. This kind of wax will to help the more elite athletes glide with less resistance, the more scratches, the more contact the boat has with the water, the more texture the boat has, the slower the boat's gonna go. It's a small change, but it, it's one that matters for older athletes. And this will also help protect the boat. Our boats are often in the sun, they're in salt water, the gel coat is old and needs repair. And this coat provides a, a barrier between the sun, the elements, the salt, kids, parents, and the boat. So this wax will try and, and act as a small thin gel coat to protect from whatever might happen to it.